It's difficult to know much for certain about the Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu. Even his name can be a little confusing. It's also sometimes translated as Lao Tzu or Lao Tse. Lao Tzu is said to have been a record keeper in the court of the central Chinese Zhu dynasty in the 6th century BC and an older contemporary of Confucius. He may also have been entirely mythical, much like Homer in Western culture. Lao Tzu is said to have tired of life in the Zhu court as it grew increasingly morally corrupt, so he left and rode on a water buffalo to the western border of the Chinese Empire. Although he was dressed as a farmer, the border official recognised him and asked him to write down his wisdom. According to this legend, what Lao Tzu wrote became the sacred text known as the Tao Te Ching. After writing this piece, Lao Tzu is said to have crossed the border and disappeared from history, perhaps to become a hermit. In reality, the Tao Te Ching is likely to be the compilation of the works of many authors over time, but stories about Lao Tzu and the Tao Te Ching itself passed down through different Chinese philosophical schools for over 2,000 years. Lao Tzu was the leading figure in the spiritual practice we now know as Taoism which is more than 2,000 years old and still popular today. There are at least 20 million Taoists, and perhaps even half a billion living around the world now, especially in China and Taiwan. They practice meditation, chant scriptures and worship a variety of gods and goddesses in temples. Taoists also make pilgrimages to five sacred mountains in eastern China in order to pray at the temples and absorb spiritual energy from these holy places, which are believed to be governed by immortals. Taoism is deeply intertwined with other branches of thought, like Confucianism and Buddhism. There is a story about the three great Asian spiritual leaders, Lao Tzu, Confucius and Buddha. All were meant to have tasted vinegar. Confucius found it sour, much like he found the world full of degenerate people. And Buddha found it bitter, much like he found the world to be full of suffering. But Lao Tzu found the world sweet. This is telling because Lao Tzu's philosophy tends to look at the apparent discord in the world and see an underlying harmony guided by something called the Tao. The Tao Te Ching, which describes the Tao, is somewhat like the Bible. It gives instructions, often vague and generally open to multiple interpretations, on how to live a good life. It discusses the Tao as the way of the world, which is also the path to virtue, happiness and harmony. The way isn't an inherently confusing or difficult thing, but in order to follow the Tao, we need to go beyond simply reading and thinking about it. Instead, we must learn flowing or effortless action. It's a sort of purposeful acceptance of the way of the Tao and living in harmony with it. This might seem lofty and bizarre, but most of Lao Tzu's suggestions are actually very simple. First, we ought to make more time for stillness. To the mind that is still, Lao Tzu said, the whole universe surrenders. We need to let go of our schedules, worries and complex thoughts for a while and simply experience the world. We spend so much time rushing from one place to the next in life, but Lao Tzu reminds us, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. It's particularly important that we remember certain things, grieving, growing wiser, developing a new relationship, only happen on their own schedule, like the changing of leaves in the autumn or the blossoming of the bulbs we planted months ago. When we're still and patient, we also need to be open. The usefulness of a pot comes from its emptiness, Lao Tzu said. Empty yourself of everything, let your mind become still. If we're too busy, too preoccupied with anxiety or ambition, we will miss a thousand moments of human experience that are our natural inheritance. We need to be awake to the sounds of the birds in the morning, the way other people look when they're laughing, the feeling of wind against our face. These experiences reconnect us to parts of ourselves. This is another key point of Lao Tzu's writing. We need to be in touch with our real, deeper selves. We spend a great deal of time worrying about who we ought to become, but we should, instead, take time to be who we already are at heart. We might rediscover a generous impulse or a playful side we'd forgotten or simply an old affection for long walks. Our ego is often in the way of our true self, which must be found by being receptive to the outside world rather than focusing on some critical, too ambitious internal image. When I let go of who I am, Lao Tzu wrote, I become what I might be. Nature is particularly useful for helping us to find ourselves. Lao Tzu liked to compare different parts of nature to different virtues. He said, the best people are like water, which benefits all things and does not compete with them. It stays in lowly places that others reject. That is why it's so similar to the Tao. Each part of nature can remind us of a quality we admire and should cultivate ourselves. The strength of the mountains, the resilience of trees, the cheerfulness of flowers. Of course, there are issues that must be addressed by action, and there are times for ambition. Yet Lao Tzu's work is important for Taoists and non-Taoists alike, especially in a modern world distracted by technology and focused on what seem to be constant, sudden and severe changes. 
His words serve as a reminder of the importance of stillness, openness, and discovering buried yet central parts of ourselves.